The Pieces Lie Where They Fell by Evil Humor Co-authored and edited by Anon E. Mouse Jr. Read for you by My Name is R. Chapter 20 Nightblade Knight supposed they were lucky that Vittel was correct, and this was an inn, with a very old mare running the place. The Auizotalus had then pushed him forwards to do the business of bribing this old mare. He supposed she was what passed for a normal grandmare, as he never knew his grandparents, save for when he was just a little colt. "'Excuse me, ma'am,' he said, giving his, going into his best soothing voice, drawing her attention to him. All those enunciation lessons... Enunciation lessons were paying off as she seemed to be at ease with him, or something along those lines. My associates and I were wondering if we could book a room for the night, at the very least. He gestured with a tilt of his head towards Paige and the rest of them, while reaching into his saddlebag and pulling out his bag of coin. With her looking at him sharply, he moved a few lunas forward. And we would appreciate that... It, if you were to forget we were here. Knight felt very foolish all of a sudden. He had no idea what he was doing and he was almost certain that Vittel had done this on purpose to make him look like an idiot. Licking his lips, he fought the urge to look back for support, but he began to sweat as she continued to look at him. He began to fidget on the spot as she slowly picked up a coin and tapped it on the edge of, a count of the counter before pulling out an official coin checker from the Flim Flam Corporation and beginning to test his currency. When it passed, she was very surprised, and looked at him with a raised eyebrow. Did you kids have anything to do with that blackout? A few more Lunas says we did not, and we were, in fact, here lamenting on the fact that those darn irredeemable kids look so much like us, Vittel said, appearing by his side, pushing more of his money towards the mare. Don't worry, she said, patting him on the head again, like he was some stupid foal. I've got this. Doing his best not to snarl at her, he felt himself pushed to the wayside as Vittel took over the negotiations, with the con artist once more taking control of his finances. He was farther pushed to the side when Rex joined her at the counter, turning away in discomfort and not trusting himself fully to keep quiet. Knight saw Vix Lee and Windbreaker talking to each other and not even looking at him. He was once again wondering why he was putting himself through this when Paige came up to him and nuzzled him. Are you okay? Y yeah, he muttered the lie, breathing in her scent and taking some reassurance in her presence. I'm still... He paused, wondering if he should tell her about how he was feeling right now. But he could bring him... <coughs> but couldn't bring himself to worry about it. What happened at the bridge, Paige? He trailed off, causing her to nuzzle him again before pulling him into a deep hug. How are you dealing with that? She said, looking at the mare that ran this inn with Vittel dealing with more of his money away, as if she didn't care that it wasn't hers to throw away. I'm... He paused again, running his fangs over his lip as he thought of what he'd done tonight. He had killed some pony. He had taken life. Sure, Crooked was a royal guard, and something that Captain General did was make sure his gu her guards could and would kill to defend other ponies' lives. But he was just a civilian, and he couldn't just talk to his older brother. Crooked was out on patrol, and he was on the lam because of this balance business. And there was the age difference. He might as well ask his nephew, Striking Blade. 
last he heard, striking was just accepted into the royal guards. But Knight never got along with striking, as they were too close in age, with striking always preening over the fact he was a year older than him. I am not sure. Please talk to me. Paige rubbed his face with her hoof. I don't like seeing you this way, Nighty. Thank you, Paige, he said, leaning to kiss her cheek when he felt something clamp down onto his shoulder. Come on, guys, Vittle <clears throat> Windbreaker said, tilting his head. Vittle got us rooms, one for the colts and one for the mares. We can talk with each other in a room, but we're not to close the doors, and we've got to close up in about twenty minutes. That seems pretty harsh, Knight said, annoying at annoyed at the griffin interrupting his time with Paige. Are you kidding me? I wish we'd got this lucky in the hatchery. Windbreaker rolled his eyes at him. I mean, they've got enough beds here so we don't have to rotate, and we've got doors for privacy. If that's what you call impressive. Knight rolled his eyes back at the griffin. Windbreaker might find that all this a step up from he what he was used to. This was a true experience for some pony like him, and he wasn't complaining about it. Well, excuse me for not being a privileged rich pony, Windbreaker grumbled. Not every pony is born with a silver spoon. Hey! Knight snapped, ready to beat the griffin down when Vittle jumped up into the middle of them. Knock it off, Knight, she glared at to into his face. We had to spend a lot of money to get some rooms here, so don't mess it up for the rest of us, all right? Me, Knight snorted, barely holding back his outrage. Yes, you, she swatted his nose, before turning to the owner and apologizing for his bad behavior. Knight rolled his eyes at this, snorting at how arrogant she was. Did you save any of my cash, Vittle? She gave him a dirty look as if he was being a brat or something by asking. Mm. She gave him a dirty look as if he were being a brat or something like that, before tossing him his greatly reduced coin bag. You're welcome, she shot back at him, with the two of them staring each other down. Thankfully, Paige stepped in the middle and told them both to cool it before turning to Rex and asking him where their rooms were. Following the diamond dog up the stairs, at the end of everyone else, Knight paused to look at the mare at the counter. He wasn't sure how much he could trust her if a large bounty on their heads appeared and she was bought out so easily. Knight? Paige asked him, the only one still on the landing with the rest of them walking into their rooms. I am coming, Paige, he said trotting up the steps and following her into the room where the rest of them were waiting. Windbreaker and Rex were already resting on the two beds, with a cot remaining for him, but Vixley and Vittle were sitting on it, causing it to sag and stretching it out, promising Knight would have no chance of a good night's sleep. He paused at the threshold, wondering if he should take the initiative and begin the conversation. Good, you're here. Vittle said, while rolling her eyes at him. Okay, we didn't get a real chance to talk about stuff, but Wind, did your... whatever you want to call it, tell you anything useful, like who or what we're up against? <coughs> no, but both she and Balance kinda hinted that there's something worse out there, and they seemed scared. They refused to even tell me a single bit more, cause according to them, it would defeat us in no time flat with only three elements, and it would end the world. Wind shuddered at the word end, before he reached into his pack and took a swig from a bottle before any of them could blink. And from how Balance said it, it seemed like the end that is, you know, the end of the world. Wonderful, Knight muttered, rubbing his face. Not only... Do we have this current unknown enemy to deal with? But we also have this end of the world monster looming over our head now. Knight paused and looked at the griffin. Also, 
didn't you say you were going to quit drinking? First off, knowing that end of the world monsters exist is drink worthy. Wind held up a single talon that Knight knew was a rude gesture. Secondly, whatever it is, it's sealed away for now, at least. That's the impression I got. That means we don't have to deal with it for a good long while. But we know it exists, so we won't be surprised when it pops up, if it does. Here, here, Vittle said, patting Wind on the back, before rummaging into the griffin's pack with her tail hoof and pulling out tumblers. Pour us something good, Windbreaker, because I don't want to have to deal with the fact that whatever balance is and one of your greatest warriors are terrified of something while I'm sober. Wind obliged her, pulling out an amount of alcohol f for each of them, with the Aoizotalus passing him the last one. Knight wasn't sure if he should drink some. He had never had a drink before, and... Shouldn't one of us be sober? Knight asked, with wind snorting at him, using his wing to cover his beak. Dude, you can't get drunk on a single shot. Wind continued to laugh at him, with Knight's face heating up as the others laughed at him. But if you want to be the sober one, Knight bared his fangs before grabbing the glass with his wing and throwing it down his throat. It burned the entire way but it got wind to shut up. Okay, I was going to toast us, Vittle trailed off, making Knight feel like a fool again. The griffin grumbled, took his glass away, and poured him another before passing it back to him. Now, Knight, wait until I say some words and we clink our glasses, okay? She said, treating him as if he were the alcoholic. He was about to tell her to stuff it when play... Page placed a hoof onto his back and shot him a smile, which made Knight stop and take a deep breath. Okay, here goes, she said, as the Aoizotalus stood up. To us! Three elements down in one day, and may whatever is after us kiss our furry backside because we are going to win. Here, here, every pony said moving their glasses into the middle for a clink, before drinking down the alcohol. So what are our plans, Vittle? he asked, the Aoizotalus being their de facto leader. Same as before, figure out how to get the other elements, escape from Canterlot, and defeat this enemy of ours, Vittle said, before pouring herself another glass of the alcohol. Page, Rex... Do you have any idea who our baddie is? Not really, Paige said, tapping her chin. Beyond the enemies, we do know of the Virtuous Six, or the Elements. Most of them were mortal. The Blue Sorceress, the Griffin Scourge, the All-Seeing Pegasus of Thunder, the, wood the Trio Wood Nymphs and their fearless followers, all mortal or mortal-ish. They're all dead. The enemies of the virtues. The longest lived one that I can think of are the dragons, as there was some conflict between them and the Magi of Stars, but thanks to Blazon Sun, no dragon would dare cross the borders for conquest, Rex said, shaking a bit. I saw him practice his magic once in the Celestia guardhouse and I learned that his style is not fire, but solar magic. As in, manipulating magic that creates objects akin to the sun, without harming the location or anyone there, implying immense control and restraint. And to go back onto the matter at paw, I don't see how a dragon could control the equestrian government without anyone being the wiser. If only more of the Scrolls of the Magi of Stars still existed. Knight sighed before looking at Biddle. As you were here to steal some sacred texts, do you know where we could find some more that might shed a light into matters? Vittle let out a huff before grabbing the bottle and taking a long swig. No, trust me, 
If there was a place beyond the capital of the most powerful nation on the world that had the most coveted pieces of paper for me to steal, I'd be there. So little is actually known about these six, Rex said with a sigh. The fact that the names that ponies worship them by are wrong, themselves, speaks of how little we can trust anything beyond what we are told by them. And even then, they won't tell us much due to Balance being forced to aid our foe. Wait, do you think it already did so? Knight said, moving onto the bed that Rex had claimed for himself. I mean, didn't Balance tell us to run? Couldn't it go after our families now, to make us surrender? Oh dear, he's right, Vixley said before groaning, as if my dad wasn't embarrassed by me already. One problem with that knight is that I'm a hatchery griffin. Paige is a ward of the Great Library. I'm guessing that Rex doesn't have a family to go back to, right? Wind broke his sneer to look at Rex with actual concern that he might have offended the Diamond Dog. <coughs> yes, but... And I'm not very close to my mom. For that matter, I don't know who my dad is, Vittle said, shrugging her shoulders. What's more likely is that whoever our foe is took control of the Captain General. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that's who's behind everything, right? And created some false evidence to set us up, make us out to be public enemy number one. So we need to figure out how to get the last three elements and two, Rex said, cutting Knight off from what he was about to point out. As Balance said, the last one will appear when we have the other five first. And, well, I do not know which of the virtues Vittel, Knight, and I will be, considering that the majority of what is believed to be true of the virtues is in fact false, and we cannot rely on what the scrolls say. Yeah, there goes that security net, Vixley grumbled before yawning into her fist. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm really drained from this entire crazy day. I think we could all use some sleep. I'm not saying anything new, and I think I'm repeating myself. Vittle yawned before stretching out. Unless anyone has important stuff that we need to talk about, I think we can call it a night. Knight felt his throat tighten. She said that they could talk about what he had done tonight, when he killed some pony, but at the same moment he felt that they wouldn't care to waste time on him, that they would push him to the side like every pony else in his life. And he was tired, too. Besides, he could talk to Paige about it tomorrow, and she'd know what to say to help him. Staying quiet, he watched Vittle not even glance at him as she hopped off his cot with Vix, Lee, and Paige joining her at the doorway. We will need to do shifts. I'm not sure about you guys, but I don't trust that granny downstairs. If she accepts our bribe, what's to say she won't turn us in for a reward? Knight, you go first for guys, and I'll take the first for us girls. Before Knight could even say a word, Vittel closed the door on them, plunging them into darkness. Doing his best not to panic at the fact he didn't even know where Paige was staying, he settled onto his cot. It was almost to the floor now, thanks to Vi Vix Lee and Vittel sitting on it, and pulled his sword out. He looked at the blade for a long time, his ears flicking at every sound as he waited for the time to pass. He heard Rex and Wind fall asleep leaving him all alone. He wasn't sure when he fell asleep, but his dreams were full of him using determined point on faceless enemies, being covered in blood, and he completely at peace. Every time he woke up that night, he was covered in sweat, before he forced himself back to making sure that no pony was coming after them. Because if something happened to them, then he would be forced to aid them when Paige might need his help and as long as he drew breath, he would make sure that nothing ever hurt her. I have quite a few things I'd like to speak with you about on this last chapter. 
I'm going to start at the back and work my way towards the beginning. So, first of all, he fell asleep on Night Watch. Hopefully nothing's going to come of that, but that could be a serious issue. Also, I just realized it looks like nothing ever came of that not working security system on the safe house. If it weren't for the fact that this is a story, this is the point where I would assume nothing's going to happen of it, nothing bad happened. Knowing that this is a story, I'm suspicious it'll come up later, because they made a deal about it at the time. I suppose we'll see, won't we? Uh, let's see. I am noticing night seems to be drifting more and more apart from most of the others. This does not look good for their group cohesiveness in the future. That could be an issue. Oh, oh, and let's look at the enemies they mention. The Blue Sorceress. That's Trixie. We already found that out. The Griffin Scourge, I'm assuming, is Gilda. I don't know who the all-seeing Pegasus of Thunder is. Hmm. Feel free to let me know in the comments if you have any notions on that one. Uh, all-seeing Pegasus of Thunder. Nope, I don't know who that could be. Wait. Derpy? Maybe? She had the eyeballs going different ways and she kept throwing lightning bolts around. <laughs> okay then. Oh wow. Well, now that that's in my head, I'm gonna think that unless I get some better idea. Derpy, the all-seeing Pegasus of Thunder, one of the ancient enemies of the elements. Okay. <clears throat> the trio wood nymphs and their fearless followers. Trio makes me think. The Crusaders, they did do a lot of stuff out in the woods, but who would their fearless followers be? Hmm. Maybe Zakora for Wood Nymph, but there was only one of her, and again, what followers? Well, hmm. Maybe those were entirely created. I don't know. Anyway, uh, there was something else. Oh, yes! Knight killed a guy, and he does seem to be taking that rather hard, which is not in itself necessarily a bad thing. As I said earlier, if it doesn't mess with someone, that's a sign of problems. Um, I think that's all I have for today. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, thank you for listening. Goodbye, everyone. Have a pleasant time.